Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So today, Daniel Haqiqaju did a reaction video to a podcast that featured Jonathan Brown and his reaction video, it was a whopping four hours long, mashallah. So because it was so long, I wanted to give a brief summary regarding what I believe to be the main issue here because although he did a good job of going into details about uh, different things that were said and discussing important points and I admittedly didn't watch the entire four-hour um, live stream but I think what he said in the beginning in the first half hour really in a sense was sufficient um, and I'll explain why within the first half hour of the live stream he, Daniel Haqiqachu, he brought up Jonathan Brown's credentials. He said, you know, what gives Jonathan Brown the, the right to make some of the statements that he's saying? And it was actually quite shocking what, what he brought up regarding Jonathan Brown's credentials in terms of being a Islamic scholar. Um, I mean, really, he has virtually no credentials. And let me be clear, it's not that anyone who's giving da'wah, anyone who is teaching about Islam, that they need to be a bona fide scholar. But people have to know their level, and they should not exceed their level. They should not speak about things that is far beyond what they're qualified to speak about. And when we see people speaking about major issues and they're bringing forth things that are unprecedented, then this is something everyone really needs to be aware of. Because what is so special about Islam? Let's think about that for a second. Why is Islam so special? Why are you a Muslim? To me, the reason why Islam is special, the reason why I'm a Muslim, is because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's from the Creator. It's from the All-Knowing. That's why. And Islam has been preserved for us. So all we have to do, we don't have to reach some sort of Einsteinian level of knowledge, come forth with some sort of new understanding of the religion. All right? All that we have to do is go back. We need to understand what does the Quran and Sunnah teach us. And we have to consult people who know, those who are inheritors of the prophets. We have to go to true scholars. And one of the reasons this is so important is because the Prophet والسلام, he warned us about people who would come and they would lead people astray because they would speak about the deen without knowledge. There's a hadith that was reported in both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. This is an authentic hadith, so let us take it very seriously. So the English translation, I heard Allah's Messenger والسلام, saying, Allah does not take away the knowledge by taking it away from the hearts of the people, but rather He takes it away by the death of the religious learned men, the scholars. Till when none of them remain, people will take as their leaders ignorant ones who, when consulted, will give their verdict without knowledge. So they will go astray and will lead the people astray. This is an authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is something we need to really take seriously and remember and internalize. In the West, we have this fascination with people who got their PhDs, even if they didn't get a PhD from a Muslim organization or in an Islamic field, we still, there's this aura that we give such people. But Islam is not about following the so-called intellectuals. It's about following what Allah revealed to us. And the only reason we should follow a scholar or somebody who's giving da'wah and talking about the religion of Islam the only reason we should take anything that they say seriously is if they are staying true to what Allah revealed to us. 
So getting back to Daniel Hakligachu's reaction, in the very beginning, he brings up Jonathan Brown's credentials. Because Jonathan Brown, he says some things that are unprecedented. Jonathan Brown himself even admits in the podcast, he says, of course it's a bid'ah. So you have to ask yourself, how is this individual qualified to speak about the religion of Allah in such a way? Now, right now, I'm at Jonathan Brown's website, drjonathanbrown.com. It says that he received his BA in history from Georgetown University in 2000 and his doctorate in Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations from the University of Chicago in 2006. That's why he is Dr. Jonathan Brown. He's not an Islamic scholar. He's not an expert when it comes to Islam. Daniel Hakikachu actually plays a clip from a podcast where Jonathan Brown talks about studying for a year or two overseas. And he actually made a statement about him th- believing that by doing that, he learned enough to move forward as a scholar. This individual is not a scholar of Islam. That's for sure. And when you listen to the entirety of the podcast that Daniel Hakikachu was responding to, you can see the cognitive dissonance that is spewed throughout the entire interview. And this is the type of thing that comes from trying to play the political game. Why is it that people hate politicians so much? It's because politicians lie. They are trying to say things that pleases everybody rather than just saying what's true. So just think about this. If I want to play this political game as a Muslim and I have an organization and I want to be able to do things like speak at a presidential rally of a candidate or I want to make sure that I don't get any backlash for being politically incorrect and I'm trying to just play that political game, I'm going to have to do things like cater to the LGBT community and at the same time try to cater to the Muslim community. And you find that that's exactly what's going on and that's why there's so much cognitive dissonance, there's so much confusion. So obviously the way that a Muslim is going to look at Yaqeen Institute when they're going to read an article and they're going to see Jonathan Brown, Dr. Jonathan Brown wrote this article, they're going to assume that this is like in one way or another a Muslim scholar. And I use that term very loosely. This is a Muslim who has his PhD. He's part of Yaqeen Institute that has this whole team, this whole squad of, you know, qualified people on it. And he's speaking about the religion. People are going to assume that his viewpoints have some sort of Islamic legitimacy. But the reality is it doesn't. And he has no business being given that platform. And in the interview, he tries to excuse himself from that responsibility by saying that he wasn't making an Islamic argument. He was making a political argument. Now, it would be different if you had, like, Bernie Sanders, for example, writing an article on Yaqeen saying that the Muslim community should support many LGBT rights. They should support uh, the right for homosexuals to get married. If Bernie Sanders wrote that on Yaqeen, Muslims would say, okay, thanks Bernie, but we think you should be a Muslim and you should follow the Prophet Okay, We would understand he's making a political argument. But when somebody like Dr. Brown, who is a Muslim, who we, everyone is going to assume he, he's qualified to speak about what he's talking about since he's co-signed by Yaqeen Institute with all of their whole team of members, there's obviously a religious tone to what he's talking about. To try to excuse oneself and say, I'm not making uh, a religious argument, that to me is so incredibly deceitful and dishonest. For a Muslim to even think that they can separate Islam from political views, I mean, this is not, this is not something you would expect. Such a obvious, grave error you would expect from an institution like Yaqeen Institute for them to give this kind of person a platform. He doesn't even seem to realize that when he says the things that he says, he's actually passing a fatwa. And he doesn't realize it to the point where even in 
the podcast, he said, what are Muslims smoking to think that I passed a fatwa? I mean, clearly, when somebody who is considered a Muslim academic says something like, Muslims should support the right for homosexuals to get married and should advocate for some LGBTQ rights, you're clearly passing a fatwa. If you don't want to pass a fatwa, then keep your mouth shut and don't talk about things that you're not qualified to talk about. You know what I would do if somebody came to me and they were like, hey, Sajid, should we support the right for homosexuals to get married? You know what I would do? I would say, hey, guess what? I'm just a student. I'm not gonna pass a fatwa for you about that. Let me consult my teachers who are qualified, people who actually earned PhDs from Islamic universities. And even they, even they will go to their teachers and ask them. Why? Because this is the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you not fear your Lord? To just speak about his religion? To just say what Muslims should do? While being portrayed as some sort of Islamic scholar? You know, it reminds me, my first year in the College of Da'wah at the Islamic University of Medina, I was taking a fiqh class. And the teacher I had that year, he was one of the best teachers I ever had. He was so sharp and smart and energetic. And it was a very difficult class because it was comparative fiqh. So we would study a particular issue and then he would come with all of the different sayings of the different scholars and schools of thought. He'd bring forth their evidences. He'd bring forth why they differed, why they disagreed. And then he would bring forth uh, what seemed to be the strongest opinion. Not based on his own he had, but based on people who were scholars above him. And I remember one day after class, I went up to him and I said, Ya Sheikh, are you going to like publish a book? Because every, every day in class, he would be writing diagrams on the board and writing everything down. And it was so clear and brilliant the way that he um, explained things compared to the book, which was actually quite confusing and it wasn't so organized. So I asked him, I was like, are you gonna like publish a book where you have all this information? And I can still remember the look on his face. He looked at me like, I don't know, like a father would look at their son, like, oh, like you're so adorable, you're, you're, you're innocence. You know, he was like, he was like, Sajid, I'm just a student like you. I'm not, I'm not publishing books, I'm just a student like you are. And he was like, here, look, if you ever have any questions in the future, take my number, call me, WhatsApp me. And I was like, Jazakallah khair. But it was so funny, the, the humility that he had and the look on his face for, for, for me to even think that he was at that sort of a level to even publish a book. And this was the type of behavior I saw year after year coming from my teachers. When, when students would ask them questions or students would try to, you know, praise them. They would always have that humility and they would always say things like, look, some of you are more knowledgeable than I am. I'm just a student of knowledge like you guys. So it really is sad and scary to come back to the United States and to see people who are just not qualified to speak about the religion of Islam, to think that they reach such a high level of knowledge. And people who really haven't studied, they're really not knowledgeable. Some of them studied with Orientalists and they're preaching and spreading Orientalist books. This is, this is what we have going on here. Wallahi, it's very scary, it's very sad. And I know people, they get upset. Why are you refuting, you know, what? Like, SubhanAllah, I mean, this is just, this is part of the deen. You know, warning people from being led astray by people speaking about the religion of Allah without knowledge. This is important. Every day we ask Allah when we recite Surah Al-Fatiha to guide us to the straight path. We have people who are leading people astray. This is horrific. The seriousness of this cannot be exaggerated. You do not want to be led astray. And some of the stuff is very clear. It's not even, it's not even complicated. That's why I say Daniel's reaction video, it can be summarized in the first 30 minutes. This person, what he's talking about is f so far beyond his level of knowledge. No one should take him seriously in this regard. Nobody should be giving him a platform. And I don't understand how people can sit there with a straight face and have a conversation with him and praise him and act like he's not speaking about the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala without knowledge. But then again, 
Maybe I'm just a neophyte who will be subjected to the dustbins of history. Allahu alam, may Allah guide all of us. But it's really, it's just really sad, subhanAllah, to see what's going on. Like the only reason a lot of this stuff is seemingly complicated is because of the cognitive dissonance. It's because some of these things, they simply do not make sense. These are very simple things. Our religion has been preserved. If you go back to the true scholars who have learned the tradition of Islam authentically, they have a certain understanding. When you find people, they go and they study with non-Muslims. When you have people who have never really studied the deen, they got a PhD in history or something like that, passing fatawa, not even realizing that they're passing fatawa. And you find some of these same individuals explicitly calling away from scholarship overseas, from the people of knowledge in the Muslim world. You find them bringing forth brand new things that are clearly contrary to Islam and the traditional understanding. And for those who do have access to scholars, it's very clear. This is, a lot of this is very elementary, basic stuff. So when you see videos like this and you see videos like uh, Daniel Hakikachu's reaction, like we're really just trying to make that apparent. That's all I have to say. Allah surely knows best. May Allah guide all of us and protect us. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.